Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bid Nerds. It's your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We are coming to you from the PBS studio in Las Vegas. We are not coming to you from the PBS studio in Las Vegas. We are coming to you from the container park in downtown Las Vegas, which is much yeah. more interesting than anything you could ever hear on PBS. Emphasis on the <laughs> BS. Uh, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, also emphasis on the BS. Uh, he's coming yep. to you from San Francisco. Uh, apparently it's warming up in there. He's not wearing the puffy jacket. Uh, how you doing, Michael? Yeah. Good. And that intro, uh, I thought we were doing a podcast of Volvos. That was so, <laughs> right? so pragmatic. Welcome to the show. Well, you know, when you wear the headphones, it always does kind of like make you go into this broadcasting mode, this classic <laughs> broadcasting <laughs> voice. Welcome yeah. to WNBC. Now, uh, okay, guys, let's. Uh, you're not here for any of that BS. You're here for cars. What do we do cars. on this channel? We find the most interesting car of the day. Uh, we have a conversation about it. Uh, from now, not just the most. What do we mean by most interesting car of the day? There's all these auction sites like Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, P Car Market, and more. Um, uh, we find the most interesting car from all the auction sites. We have a conversation about what's going on with the market in that car and the specifics about that car. Uh, we make a prediction as what's going to happen with that car's auction if it's sells, if it's not going to sell, all that kind of fun stuff. And then we go into the future uh, and we find out exactly what happens. Um, so today's most interesting car is definitely a car that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. Uh, oh, okay. I have a lot of connection to these, yet it's odd. I have never owned one of these. Look at this yeah. beautiful E36 M3. This is, this is the right way to do it. Look at that. You want to hear something really weird, JP? Huh. I've never driven one of these. I've never Holy, driven an E36 are you M3. Kidding? No, it's like one of my favorite cars. I've never driven one. How crazy is that? That is crazy. Unbelievable. I want one so bad. Um, Jake, what I picked is essentially a poor man's lightweight. Uh, on Bring It Trailer is our 1995 BMW M3 Coupe with a five-speed. Uh, the current owner of this car has had it for 25 years. The wow. Car is showing is showing 74,000 original miles and offered out of Beave Creek, Ohio. Uh, the car is looks to be in, honestly spectacular edition. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Alpine white. Uh, it's got black Napa leather on Vader seats, the really cool sports seats uh, that are uh, wonderfully comfortable and actually really beautiful to look at. Uh, no nonsense here, JP. It's on the correct, I think, the right wheels, the style 22 staggered width 17-inch wheels. Uh, little to no modifications on the car at all. It's just all original, no nonsense, very nice condition, very reasonable miles. Um, E36s have uh, come up in value. Uh, this car's got a few miles on it, but not too many miles. Uh, but just seeing one that hasn't, you know, JP beat the snot out of, yeah. uh, in of itself is an occasion. Uh, obviously, I'm a fanboy of the, of the lightweight, which only came in white with beautiful livery uh, decals on the car. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could put on the high wing and all that nonsense. Uh, but just looking at one of these with no wing and the right wheels in the right color with the right models. Uh, and I would say also, from what I understand, the three liter motor that was only available in 95 versus the 3.2 that was available East through 99. My crude understanding is that these are um, like 993s, JP. These are a less nonsense motor um, like the uh, 95 993s that had the as you say, one OBD sensor versus the later cars that had the real RAM and multiple sensors that were a teeny bit more problematic. My understanding is that these three liters um, make the same amount of torque and are just an easier, even more bulletproof, less maintenance motor. So by all accounts, John, this is the car you want to own if you were looking for one and you didn't have lightweight money to spend because those cars are now 100 grand more. Uh, I'm living this car. I just picked it because when I look at it, I'm like, man, I, I want to be behind the wheel of that car. I want it in my garage. When I walk through my garage in the morning, I'm just, I'm all over this car. So, Pete, what do you think, man? Where are you? You love it as much as I do? I'm yeah, I think I do. I look, these were, these, you know, I remember, you know, we're old enough to remember when these were contemporary cars. They were such yeah. a drastic improvement over, 
uh, and design forward look over the E30. Uh, it yep. really was kind of a spaceship, kind of. And then the transition from this to the E46, BMW was just <clears throat> in its stride for a couple of decades there. And this represents, yeah. you know, some of the best of the best. This is a car that normal people could own. This car was less expensive than a 911 and it had every bit of the performance. This is one of those cars where, you know, it, it's kind of like people constantly compare 911s uh, to M3s, you know, and yeah. and the original M3 uh, in the E30 variety, you know, had the small engine, it was a, you know, 1.8, yeah. um, which compared to a 911, uh, uh, you know, in, in the E30 times, you know, E30s uh, were contemporary with what, 960? fours and um and uh further back you know the the g50 911 so you're looking at three six you know 3.2 and 3.6 liter engines that were pushing uh how much did a 3.2 career engine have d that's like 290 or 280 or something like that uh power yeah and in Uh, in the late 80s uh, yeah they're just uh 220 horsepower here 230 pound 230 horsepower yeah so, you know, and that little 1.8 was kind of keeping up with that bigger motor. And then the, the E30s it was were... A, it was a what's that? that, JP. I think they were like 2.3 or 2.5 in the in E30s. In the E30s? Yeah. Well, okay. Somebody you have to correct me on that. You, you're probably right. I'm looking up um, right now. Yeah. But uh, regardless, they were teeny little four cylinders, you know, compared to these big uh, six cylinders. So they were kind of like the 911 killer. But then the E36 came out and they went with a much bigger displacement and two more cylinders. Uh, with, the, yeah. I mean, that straight six is just such a silky smooth, wonderful power delivery. Uh, the transmissions on these are butter easy to drive like this car is as easy to drive as a honda accord i mean you just don't have to be a great driver to look like a rock star in this thing yet it's still early enough that it didn't have all this you know silly nanny controls and everything like that um this car is in a lot of ways uh was was definitely superior to the 911 um you know functioning air conditioning and stuff like that uh you know but they were less expensive, and then when the E46 came out, that was such a that was also a big, huge leap from these to the next generation. Yeah. That and there were so many E36s, uh, M3s made in the 90s. That's when things were hot. You know, the economy was good. Tons of these cars were out there, um, and consequently, they plummeted in value, and most of them were pretty much destroyed. I mean, the kids got a hold of them. The drifters yeah. loved them because they had lots of torque, rear you know rear wheel drive, manuals, and these cars just got obliterated um yeah a lot of these cars have been converted to track cars like guys that like yeah. to do track days you could go out and buy a modern japanese car like uh solomon has done or you could take an old e36 and put coilovers on it and a strut car and yeah. you can keep up with just about anybody these cars work so well um when they're pushed to their limit they're really a great platform from which to build your favorite driving tool on yeah and paying more than ten thousand dollars for an M3 for years, right up into fairly yeah. recently too, yeah, was like ludicrous. unheard of. I right. mean, it was like, oh, dude, they're they're dime a dozen. They're they're cheap. They're easy. Even nice ones, you know, nice ones just didn't exist, um, you know, for so long. Uh, they barely brought any more, much more than ten thousand bucks. So right. to see an unlisted one in a beautiful basic color, uh, you know, white on black, uh, in just a oh, god, this car is just gorgeous. Um, you know, survivor quality, and uh, but you know, how many miles are we looking at this one? Yeah, uh, let me read it to you again, JP. It's just seventy four thousand original miles. Yeah, so it's not so low the miles that you're like going, oh, I don't want to drive it and ruin it. No, um, this really is the perfect driver quality M three that you can own, love, um, and continue to you know give it give it the attention that it needs to kind of hold its value, but get sure. all the driving enjoyment out of it. There's just fair, there are very 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 few cars that exist. Uh, that are going to give you this kind of fun bang for the buck uh, for whatever this goes for. And the big question is, how much will this go for? So what do you think? Yeah. So, JP, um, really quickly. So those E30 M3s are 2.3 liter. Okay. And at the very, and the very end, um, they made a 2.5 liter called the Sport Evolution, but we never got those in America. Got it. And then this car came out 3 liter, graduated to 3.2 liter. Um, while the European versions got individual throttle bodies, we didn't see individual throttle bodies until the E46, and then we got a motor that was congruent with the rest of the world. Um, so super cool cars. Um, every Porsche guy knows that, that that every once in a while BMW makes a special car, and this is one of them. 
Our car, JP, is at $21,000 with about three days to close on Bring a Trailer. Um, initially, I thought this car might bring 50 grand, but the market is cooling and this car a couple of miles on. And so I was just tempering that back a little bit. I changed my bid to $45,000, but I think it'll sell there. Um, I do think that's all money, but I do think it's realistic. I think I think this car will bring it. Again, uh, we the 95 is unique. It's the only year we got a three liter in America. Um, I think the colorway is perfect because it's alpine white with the black fader seats and a, and a limited slip differential. I think this car ticks all the boxes, and I think 45 is all the money. So where are you at? Yeah, you know, I'm bearish right now, so it'll this will be a good litmus test for what happens in the market. I think uh, car enthusiasts have a bit of an optimism optimism bias, uh, and so people are kind of looking at what's going on in the market and all yeah. the craziness and going, who cares? Uh, we're just going to yeah. keep buying cars. If you're going to put some money in something, look, if you put your money in the stock market, you're going to lose money. If you put your money in crypto, you're going to lose money. Uh, if you put your money in gold, you're going to lose money. If you put your money in a... Uh, you know, a classic enthusiast car, you're probably going to lose money, but at least you'll have a car that you can go right. drive around in. Right. So yeah, why not plop a little bit of money into something that's as great as this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say 41 um, and hope it gets there and hope it sells at that. I hope that the uh, buyer yeah. doesn't have an unrealistic, uh, you know, reserve on this thing. Uh, it is interesting that the person has had this for this long and is letting it go. I don't know why, if you've had it for, for 25 years, why would you sell this car? You know, this yeah. doesn't seem like the type of person that would have a car like this would need the money, but who knows what people's individual uh, situations yeah. are, but it's like I, a nice house. Yeah. If the, if this were my car, I would just never, sell never it. sell it. Never, never sell it. One sell owner. It. Yeah. Cause no it's way. paid for. You yeah, bought it for done. 20. You bought it for 20. It's paid for. Keep what are you going to do with 40 grand, yeah. <laughs> you know, or 50 grand yeah. or, you know, that's, that's better than this. I mean, I just, I don't, I just, I just don't see it. So what do you guys think? Now is the time to put in your bid. Play along with us. See if you're better at it at this than we are. We want to know. We really enjoy seeing your guys' bids. Uh, you know, so do it now. Let's see what you got. And we'll find out how much it sells for right after this. Time to go to the future. Hey, guys. I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's Guys, G-Y-X, underscore customs that's how you spell it guys customs bracelets these things are amazing check them out they're handmade in america custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car these things are unbelievable i have three or four of them myself my partner michael deeb has a bunch of them uh they're pretty addictive once you get one each one of them are bespoke we're talking uh we're talking carbon fiber we're talking titanium we're talking stainless steel glass there's none of this cheap chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there these ones are super high quality they're made right here in america when you go to guys customs on instagram it's about the only place that you can order one of these uh when you dm the artist you're actually reaching the real artist when you dm guys customs at instagram uh and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch that special car or that special person that has a special watch or a special car and they want something really really cool uh in their life these are the they make the most amazing gifts um I get compliments on mine all the time. Everywhere I go, people are like, wow, that's really cool. You can see in the pictures, uh, you know, these beads, the, the colored beads are PTS. They're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car or your watch. It's unbelievable. You got to get one of these guys, customs, bracelets, check them out. They support us. Uh, and we really, really, really want to support them. Guys, customs, bracelets. All right, let's get back to the bids. Let's find out how much that car sold for today. Hey guys, welcome to the future. We are doing the bid nerd thing uh, in studio in the future. We have Lane Skelton from DWA driving while Dad. awesome in Radwood. What's up, buddy? Back again. Thanks for having me, guys. Having a Lane's third like a nerd. Relative. He is. Lane's like a, he's like a relative. He never really goes away. Yeah. Uh. 
Mm. I'm like a herpes. I'm the herpes of yeah. third oh, wow. nerves. Oh, wow. I, I think I have some ointment. <laughs> oh, he's a virus. Here somewhere. It's sticky. Uh, hey, all right. Well, on that note, uh, see you tomorrow, guys. We're out. Now, uh, you guys will stick around this long. You want to know what happened with this uh, really, really nice BMW E36 oh. M3 in some kind of fancy white configuration. Alpine white. Oh, look at that. He's white. stepping up with the knowledge. Let's hear about yeah. it. Look at this. 1995 BMW M3 coupe in Alpine white, black Vader seats, uh, limit slip, five speed, uh, original miles, 64,000 original miles offered to us on branch in the Beaver Creek, Ohio. Now, I, your partner just bought it's a car, yellow car. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as well. And, and I just know, as a car enthusiast, you know these cars really well. What do you think? We know um, E36s have just been on the rise. And, yeah. And so when you see unmodified, low-mile, original car, they're starting to bring some serious money. So, Lane, I present you this car. What do you think? I mean, I, I've always been, I like the first year, too. Like, it's yeah. one of those things, too. Like, this is the sure. first year of three, so it's a three-liter other than the 3.2. Um, it's a cool wheel, motorsport wheels, has the faders. It's in Alpine white, which is actually pretty rare. Um, yeah. And like people love that these days, even if, you know, um, maybe it's not my favorite, but, uh, and it looks like a pretty, I mean, the door panels are pulling, of course, that's every BMW 36 ever almost. Um, but yeah, it looks like a pretty good unmolested car. So uh, these are they're becoming big money cars. All right, so 74,000 original miles is on Bring a Trailer. Link you on the spot. Give us a quick number before we tell you what we did. Yeah, I'm going to say um, I'm gonna say 30K. 30K. All right, so Lane is, for the first time uh, joining us, Lane is really light. JP said $41,000. I with $45,000, and I nearly got a lot of Yahtzee. Our car sold for $46,000 on 33 bids on Bring a Trailer. So, Lane, I'll go right back to you. Again, your bid was light, but we didn't give you a lot of uh, prep time. Uh, what, when you hear $46,000 for a three-liter M3 coupe, this, do, do you just do toes curl? Like, how happens to your butt cheeks, you know? Yeah, dude, I guess I stopped looking at prices two years ago. So, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know, man. That's like... Oh, that's so crazy. Is um, that nuts? I, I just remember these things like five years, six years ago being at 12. People were like, ah, I wouldn't have been that. You know, 12 grand, it seems right. high. So, you know, all those stories about everything. But this is pretty recent, you know. So, um, yeah, that's a lot of money. But yeah, I don't know, like, 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 I guess I kind of took myself into a high number originally, too. 24,000 miles, white, 85. You know, nice car, but that's that's a lot of dough. It is a lot of uh, dough for E thirty. Do you do you think that justifies like, it? It's good a driver car as an E thirty six. Do you think it's a forty five thousand dollar car? No, because no, that's like Porsche money. Almost, it's like it's like. What it's do you like get for forty five thousand bucks in Porsche that matches oh, the? Okay. Uh, Fifty grand, you get a nine eleven C, right? Yeah. Uh, so right there, it's like you just have a real sports car as opposed to this, which is a coup, you know, it's a BMW sedan based thing. They're great, they drive great, but it's a different thing. Um, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, they're. I mean, is it fair? Car, you know? Is it fair to compare uh, an SC? to an E36 M3. I mean, I think the E36 M3 is the better driving car, and I'm, you know, totally a 911 guy. I mean, a clean, unmolested E36? Uh, they better they drive like a sports sedan, but it's a totally different feeling than a dedicated sports car, so that's where it, it they're a totally different thing. But I, yeah. I feel like this is just... Just look at this as an enthusiast market, right? So, like, yeah, an enthusiast is not this is not a car you're like comparing numbers or skid pad or anything like that. You're just sure. looking at the enthusiast market of like, hey, I want a somewhat modern sports sporty car. Um, yeah. I think I see, and these are the same category, you know, the same person's looking at both of them, yeah. And, um, yeah, these have a lot of, I mean, you know, 911s have a lot of maintenance and engine pops, and you're in your 25 grand, right? Which yeah. is a big at deal. Least. These have water pumps and 
all the all that kind of stuff and then you also have subframes cracking all the time and you know all these all these kind of issues so you know everything has their issues but um yeah i mean at I 45 mean, at, there's a lot a lot that? of these guys that have a nine a lot of guys that have a career at 9 11 are gonna have these too so yeah yeah it's it like really an, is a... it's like an it's an and not an it, not a, the other so well, I mean, I, I, you're probably right. But then again, I don't know if, if you're new, if you're kind of like, on, all right, I'm getting my first enthusiast car. I'm with you. E36 is to me, when I see an E36, even one as nice as this, I have a hard time not thinking 10000 bucks because for so long <laughs> they were just so cheap. But <clears throat> let's be honest. Uh, you know, most of those were high miles or beat up. I mean, to see something with 24,000 miles that's this clean, it's like I haven't seen one this nice and this clean since these things were brand new cars. I mean, most of these have been drifted to the end, you know, to the end of their lives. Uh, to, so, to you know, like even an SC uh, at 45,000 bucks, you're not getting yeah. a 24,000 mile yeah. one owner. You're getting something that's, <laughs> you know, to get yeah, an SC that's as... Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm obviously I'm with you. I'd get the 911 uh, all day long. I don't know why. But... I mean, I'm just I, I guess I'm just like looking at there, that is a lot. I mean, you're looking at this was a forty thousand dollar car new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you look at it that way, um, but, you know, this is the whole this is the Redwood, you know, kind of that era of cars. It's like mm -hmm. these guys like people grew up with this car. They had the car yellow one on the on their wall and yeah. looked at in magazine you know people my age and always lessened for this car and then find a white one in this condition with this miles it's like go for another one yeah i mean it's this is i i understand the price well we reviewed uh yesterday a car what was it uh, the rsr clone or wannabe hot rod 911 that was like a yeah. it was it was a mid-year it was like 77. um right. that car you know it failed to sell at a hundred thousand bucks. Uh, and, but you know, we, the takeaway from that car was that if you have a solid unmolested nine eleven um, that has way higher miles and just, you know, is maybe even a little rough, something that's original and, cl and relatively clean is going to be worth more in the long run than the hot rods that have been modded to the nth degree. So this car to me kind of feels like even though the price is crazy high for an E36 M3, if you're going to buy an E36 M3, I think you're way better, way overpaying for something like this than you are buying one that's kind of rough for $20,000. What do you think of that? Oh, all day. And yeah. are you really, are you, you're not overpaying if the market dictates that's what it's worth, right? Yeah, so, true. Yeah. Uh, if this car will always be, a somewhat blue chip one like even when e36 like talking about 911s being the blue chip, like our like clean stock you know a good year 911 this is a good this is one that will always be at the top right you're yeah. not like the, the crappy ones maybe like ten thousand dollar cars again this is always going to be one that people lust after and want and pay big money for them. I suspect we're yeah. going to see a bunch of lesser ones pop up on the auction sites with people thinking that they're going to be able to get this kind of money for them. And it's going to be like, they'll yeah. just 50 S's yeah. left and right. Yeah. It's always trend on bring a trailer. It's certainly the, the calzone theory. When one person orders one, everybody has to order one. Um, that's our restaurant analogy for this. Um, you guys were saying something earlier about um, if you're new, what would you use? you know, E36 or 911. And the thing is, um, if they're new, there are budget E36 M3s you can buy. They're just rough and they can be problematic. Where there really are budget 911s. You can't pick up a 911 for half this result. Like like you could find a 911 for 46, but you're not gonna find a 911 for 23. You could find an E36 for 23. So I do yeah. still think it'll remain an entry level sports car. I'll be one that you got, you and I guys would want to own. Uh, but some buddy, some kid is going to get into a sports car, do a track day, and really ratty E36, and still wonder, God, if this car is this good, what would a 911 be like? Well, and comparable 911 would be a ninety thousand dollar car, right? Yeah. So, yeah, right yeah. there, it's like twice yeah. as much. Yeah. 
So there goes my there goes my whole argument. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is Lane just so rad he lost all perspective on uh, you know the most rad car maybe that there is, uh, or is his advice spot on? Probably better than the nerds. Uh, by the way, don't ever listen to us. We haven't said that in a while, uh, and some people have been hitting me up uh, offline, and and I've been getting a lot of DMs lately going, oh, what should I do? Should I invest in this car and that car? I'm like, why would you ask us or me? in particular i don't know don't ask me don't don't ask for financial advice this is just a dumb show about cars uh thanks for hanging out lane thanks for hanging out with us uh maybe uh, yeah. you'll come and hang out with us tomorrow i'm yeah. down I'm all right down. he's down see you guys in the future get those nerds